if I can do it from the back. All right, so circles and parabolas are the first two of what will become four conics that we're going to cover. Okay, a conic is just a section or intersection of a plane and a double napped cone. Hello, sir. All right, so a cone or a double napped cone is like an hourglass. So if you could picture an hourglass, and if you look there on the right-hand side, if you take a plane and you slide it through horizontally like that purple one, you get this perfectly rounded circle. If you take it and you slide it at a diagonal like the green one, you get an ellipse, which is really just an oval. If you take it and you like cut the edge of it, you get a parabola. And if you slide it through vertically, you get a hyperbola, which is basically like two parabolas turned up and down. These are the four conics that we're gonna cover. Today we're gonna do the circle and the parabola. A circle is a collection or defined as the collection of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point. Thank you. That point is your center. So it is HK. In the standard form of the equation, notice there's minuses in front of them. You will always change the signs on your H and your K. So standard form of a circle is the first of many formulas you have to know from conics. And it is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Again, HK is your center. If you have the equation and you take the center out, you will change the signs. If you have the center and you put it into the equation, you will also change the signs. They'll always be the opposite. And then the R is the radius, so we would square root whatever is in the equation. And if we were trying to find the equation, we would square it. So the first thing we're going to do with this is find the equation given a point and a center. If it says the point 1, 4 is on, is on a circle whose center is at negative 2, negative 3, and I want you to write the standard form of the equation of the circle. So if you're like me, the more you repeat something, the better it is in your brain. I would rewrite out the standard form of the circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, which one's the center? What coordinates are the center? Negative two. Good. So this one, negative 2 is my h. Negative 3 is my k. And the x and y is the other one. So the x is the 1 and the y is the 4. And then we just plug it in. So x being 1 minus a negative 2 squared plus y being 4 minus a negative 3 squared equals r squared. I'd end up with 3 squared plus 7 squared equals r squared. 9 plus 49 equals r squared, and r squared is 58. Now, if it had asked for r, I would then square root that and simplify it. But because it's asking for the equation, and in the equation it's r squared, I can just leave it as the r squared. I go back to my standard form and I plug in the h, the k, and the r. So I get x minus a negative 2, which becomes plus 2, squared plus y minus a negative 3 becomes y plus 3 squared equals my r squared, which is 58. Questions? Okay. Hopefully everything in the next couple weeks feels familiar because conic should feel familiar, okay? When we do this in Algebra 2 honors, you tend to get like a reference sheet. That won't happen this year. So all these formulas have to get logged into the brain. All right, example two says put the equation into standard form, then find the center and the radius, and then graph the circle. So what you should notice about this is that it's not in standard form, right? I've got an x squared and an x and a y squared and a y, so this is why we reviewed complete the square, because we have to complete the square for any variable that you have an x squared and an x, or, or to raise to the second power and the first, which means you're going to do it twice. You're going to do it once for your x's, and you're going to do it once for the y's. So I'm going to group those together, x squared minus 6x, leave the space, oh that's a terrible color, sorry, plus y squared minus 2y, leave that space, and then take the constant and bump it to the other side so it sets equal to negative 6. Now I complete the square, there's nothing to take out, so I go straight for that b term, 6 divided by 2 would be 3, and 3 squared is 9. I add the 9 here, and to balance my equation, I'm going to add the 9 to the other side. Okay. 
Repeat that with the y's. Take the 2, divide it by 2, it's 1, squared it's 1. I'm going to add the 1 here and also to the other side. So now we just made those perfect square trinomials so we can factor them. This the shortcut to factoring perfect square. Square root the first term, square root the last term, take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses and square it. And then repeat that for the y, square root the first term, square root the last term, take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses and square it. And then negative six plus nine is three, <coughs> plus one is four. And now you've got your equation in standard form. And from here, you want to identify the center, which would be what? Good. And the radius? Good. Questions on that one? So if it asks you to graph it, let's say, if I wanted to graph this circle, I would go to the right three, I would go up one, and then I would go up two, right two, down two, left two, to get the graph of your circle. So each of these conics, you want to know how to do them both ways. Here's the graph, or here's information, find the equation, or here's the equation, find the information. Yep, so I go to the center first, which I just like went over three and up one and I plot my point, that's the center. And then whatever the radius is, you wanna go like north, south, east, west on it. You go up the radius, right the radius, down the radius and left the radius, and then just connect them as best you can. Questions? All right. Example three says find the x and y intercepts. So how do we find x and y intercepts? How do we find x intercepts? Let's start that one. So x intercept, we plug zero in for x. No, in for y. And then the y intercept, we plug zero in for x. So if I wanna find the x intercepts, I get x minus four squared plus zero minus two squared equals 16. I get x minus four squared plus negative two squared equals 16. x minus four squared plus four equals 16. x minus four squared equals 12. And then we're going to square root it, but we're not going to forget the plus or minus because there's technically two solutions to that. X minus 4 would equal plus and minus square root 12, which becomes 4 and 3, or 2 root 3. And then you're going to add the 4. So you can separate these out. Or you can put them together at 1, but it has to be in coordinate point form. So it'd be 4 plus and minus 2 root 3 comma 0. Or it would be 4 plus 2, 2 root 3 comma 0, 4 minus 2 root 3 comma 0. Those are your x-intercepts. Yep. You can also do plus and minus 2 root 3 plus 4. Yep. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, the order doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to do y-intercepts. So we're going to plug 0 in for x. So 0 minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Negative 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. 16 plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Subtract the 16. And I get y squared or y minus 2 squared equals 0. This time when I plus or minus, it doesn't matter because zero would just be zero. And I get y equals zero plus two or y equals two. So it's zero, two for my y intercept. Now there's really no rule on like the number of intercepts. You can have like if I had my a circle, you know, perfectly at the center and I went right, left, up, down, you could end up having two of each. If it was floating somewhere in a quadrant, it could be none. Like, it, it maybe doesn't touch either axis, okay? Or in this case, you have, like, one on the y-intercept y and one on the x. 
All right, next conic up is parabolas. Now, we've talked about parabolas like way back in the beginning of the year where we did them in function form or they were quadratic as in it would say something like f of x or y equals x squared plus blah, 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 and we had them in quadratic form. Or they were functions and in either of those cases, our parabolas only opened up or down. When you get into the conic section, they can be turned sideways as well. So these parabolas will face up, down, right, or left. Okay, by definition, a parabola is the set of all the points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed line, which is called the directrix, and a fixed point, which is called the focus. So when you draw your parabolas, like for example, this one opens up. They can turn any direction, but this one opens up. There is a point that is a fixed distance inside, away from the vertex inside the scoop, so like inside the branch, and that's called your focus. And then there's a line that is the same distance in the other direction, and that's called your directrix. So when we graph these, these will not be perfect, but you will get a vertex, you will get a focus, and you will get a directrix. The further the focus is away from the, from the, the branch, the more narrow it is, but I don't even, it doesn't need to be that specific. Those three parts are what you're gonna identify. And if you are given information and you're drawing it, you'll get given two of those three. So they could give you the focus and the directrix. They could give you the focus and the vertex. They could give you the vertex and the directrix. And one way or the other, you'll get the rest of that information. The, um, the second bullet says the midpoint between the focus and the directrix is, is the vertex. And the line passing through the focus and the, direct, and the vertex is the axis of symmetry. So if you remember our axis... That one runs through your vertex. So it's going to be perpendicular to your directrix. These are the standard forms. So again, add it to your like mental formula list or add it to a, a formula sheet if you want to have something for review. These are the standard equations of a parabola. Now there are four on this because they simplify at the bottom is if your vertex is 0, 0, it simplifies it. It gets rid of the H and the K. But really, if you just learned the top two, then you wouldn't need all four because the top two you could use whether it has an HK of zero or it's something else. So the HK is your vertex. If it is an X squared and this 4P is positive, so if it's an X squared with a positive 4P, then it opens upward. If it's an x squared and it has a negative 4p, then it opens downward. And then if it's a y squared, if it's a y squared with that, then it opens right or left. If it's a y squared with a positive 4p, then it opens to the right. And if it's a y squared with a negative 4p, it opens to the left. So that's how you can determine the direction, whether you have the equation and you're drawing it, or if you had the actual information and you're trying to plug it into the equation, you would know if you needed to make p positive or negative. p is the distance from the focus to the vertex or the vertex to the directrix. You, based on the orientation of your graph, will need to know if you make it positive or negative. Like, P itself is just distance, so it does not need to have a sign. But when you go to, let's say I plot my, my parabola, and it's turned on the side, and I find the distance from the vertex to the focus is 3, then P would be a, po or 4P ends up being positive. If it's turned the other way, now I make my 4P negative. So that's how you know what sign to make your 4P. And then reverse. If I get the equation and it's negative, I know to point it left or down. And if I get the equation and it's positive, I know to point it up or right. The biggest thing is we're so used to solving for the variable to the first power. Like if I gave you something that was quadratic, you would always make it Y equals, right? Like you would put X squared on the other side with the other things. And we have to get out of that habit. Standard form, the squares are on the sides by themselves. And the variable that's raised to the first has all the other parts. It can have a vertex point, 
So it could be X minus H or Y minus K, but nothing on the front. If it had something on the front, I'd have to move it to the other side. On, on, the, X, on the X squared. So if it said X minus 2 squared equals 4Y, let's say it said negative 2 here, I'd have to divide by negative 2 because there can be nothing on the front of that. And then on the bottom, it just says if HK is 0, 0, so your vertex is at 0, 0, then we simplify those equations. But again, if you just memorize the top ones and you know that you get rid of the H, the K, then you don't need all four. All right, so here's the parts of your graph. On the left, these are your vertical parabolas. This is if your X is squared. And on the right is your horizontal parabolas. This is if your Y is squared. So the vertex obviously splits the difference between the focus and the directrix. Focus is inside the scoop. Directrix is the opposite direction. Your arrows from your parabola cannot cross through your directrix. It always goes away from it. And then the opposite, if it points down, your directrix is above it. Again, directrix is an equation because it has to be a line. And then on the right-hand side, if it's a y squared to the positive 4p, it's going to point for the right. Focus is inside. Directrix falls vertically behind it. And if it points to the left, focus is inside that scoop, and the directrix is on the right, again, like not crossing through that, the branch. So different types of questions are going to start like this. Here's information about my parabola. Give me the equation. And the other, here's an equation. Get the graph or the information out of it. So it says find the standard form of the equation of the parabola with a vertex at the origin and focus 0, 4. My advice, I'm a visual person, but you don't have to, so you don't have to do this this way. But for me, the easiest thing to do is just draw myself a little picture. So if my vertex is at 0, 0, and my focus is at 0, 4, what do you know about this parabola? The P is 4. What else? It opens up, it opens up which means what? Which, one's vari which variable is squared? X is squared and is 4P positive or negative? positive 4p. So if I start with the full equation, it's going to be x minus h squared equals 4py minus k. If you simplify it, because it's at 0, 0, then it's x squared equals 4. My p was also 4, and it stayed positive, times y. And I get x squared equals 16y. There, k is 0. So if you wanted to plug in the h, the k, you could, but they're going to be 0, so they're going to go away. Anytime it says origin. All right, so b, vertex at the origin, focus at 1, 0. So again, vertex at the origin. This time, focus is 1, 0. So vertex and focus. Now, what do you know about this one? It points to the right, which means which variable is squared? Y, positive or negative 4p? Positive 4p. And what is p? One. So I get y squared equals 4px for my general equation. And then I plug in the 1. And I get y squared equals 4x. Say again. The distance from the vertex to the focus. So like I, I mean, you could, you could look at your points or you could draw it out. Valeska. It would be the same. It would have been y minus k squared equals 4px minus h, except that h and k are 0 if the vertex is at the origin. Okay. So it's just a simpler version of it. So but you can always start that same way. You cannot always start this way. So like if your vertex is not 0, 0, you have to use the complicated one. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, example five says find the standard form of the equation of the parabola with a vertex at 1, 3 and a focus at 1, 5. So, vertex, 1, 3. Yep. Focus at 1, 5. So, yep, pointing up, which means which variable is squared? X squared, positive or negative 4P? Positive 4P. And what is P? To go from 3 to 5, what's the distance? P is 2. And my vertex is my HK, so I can't use the simplified one. I have to use the expanded one. X minus H squared 
equals 4px minus k, um, y minus k, sorry. So x minus 1, which is my h squared, equals 4 times p, which is 2, times y minus 3. And I get x minus 1 squared equals 8 times y minus 3. And you'll keep it just like that. You don't want to distribute on the right-hand side. That's standard form. So standard form has the 4p on the front, and you separate it out with the parentheses. So you're going to see in a minute if we have it actually attached to it, we have to take it out. Still good? Yes? When we're done. All right, find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix of the parabola. Now, this is in expanded or quadratic form, and I need to put it into standard form. So we're going to complete the square again. My advice, though, is get rid of the fractions from the get-go. I need an x squared to be with nothing in front of it anyways. When I group these, I only have to complete the square on the x's because that's the only one that has the squared. So I'd multiply by a negative 2 from the very beginning and get rid of those fractions. They will come back into effect at the end. But at least I don't have to deal with them while I'm completing my square. So it would be negative 2y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. So, yeah, it has to be positive. So if you left it negative, you then have to take it out anyways when you group them. So now if, if that 1 was positive, that already is a perfect square trinomial. I could have just factored it. But because it's negative, it's not, so I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to move the 1 to the side with the 2y, negative 2y. And then I've got x squared plus 2x. I need to fill my space. Take 2, divide it by 2, square it, you get what? One, I'm going to add that here and here. So I get negative 2y plus 2 equals, factor it out. Square root the first, square root the last. Take the sign from the middle, put it in the parentheses, and square it. That's it? Nope. You have to take the negative 2 off. So first of all, a lot of us are like, again, you get visual and you memorize your formulas and the squares are always on the left. So if you want to switch this, you can. But it doesn't make it wrong to have it on the right. The problem with this is that there can be nothing attached to that term. So like the negative 2 that's on the y has to get factored out. So I'm going to switch it just so that we like constantly remember the squared is on that side. And then I'm going to take out the negative 2 and it would make it y minus 1. Now it's in standard form. Because I, you have to divide both the negative 2y and the positive 2 by negative 2. You're factoring it out. Okay, so now tell me what you know about this parabola. It faces down because it's a negative 4p, right? And it's an x squared. What else can you tell me? So 4p would equal 2. The, the sign doesn't really matter as long as you know where to put this. But this would be p equals 1 half. And the vertex at negative 1, 1. Good. Vertex at negative 1, 1. So if I'm going to plot this, I go negative 1, 1, and I point it down. So the question asks for the vertex and the focus and the directrix. So because it's a negative 4p, I mean, it pointed down. I know to get my focus, I'm going down a half. Other way around, so subtract it. Add it to get the directrix, <laughs> subtract it to get, because you're coming down, right? So your focus would be, oh, are you saying negative one and one half like that? Oh, I thought you said like that. Okay. The, the, the coordinate points are negative one and one half because we did one minus one half. And then the directrix, you'd go one half up and you'd make it a horizontal line. So it's y equals 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, or 1.5. Like, any of those answers would be fine. Valeska. The focus has to be in coordinate point form, and the directrix has to be in equation form. Danielle. How do you determine, like, whether you add or subtract the p? If it's pointing up, I would add the p to get my focus, because it goes inside the scoop. If it w and I would subtract my P to get my directrix. Because it pointed down, 
we subtracted the, the P and to get the focus because we want it inside the, the branch or scoop or whatever, and we want to add the one half to get the directrix. Questions on that one? All right, last one. Same concept. You have to complete the square, get it into standard form. So try it. Do it on your own. Which variable are you completing the square for? The y. Only the one that's squared. All right. First thing we're going to do is group together the y's and then kick the 4x to the other side. So I end up with y squared minus 8y. Leave that space. Equals negative 4x minus 12. And obviously you can do negative 12. Shh, shh, guys, shh. You can obviously do negative 12 minus 4x, but you want the x at the front, so you might as well reorder it now. Then you take the 8 divided by 2. That's 4 squared. That's 16. It gets added here. It gets added here. On the left, I factor y minus 4 squared equals negative 4x plus 4. These cannot stay together, so we take off the negative 4, and I get x minus 1, and there's my standard form. How do we do so far? Good? All right, what's, what direction does this face? It points left. What's my vertex? Good, you didn't fall the, for the trap. Normally, if the y is on the left, we, your like, brain literally inverts it and always says x is on the left, so be careful. Okay, your 4p is 4. You don't need the sign because you know you're going to move it left and right. So the p itself is 1, which means from my negative, from my 1... 4, I'm going to go left 1, and that's my focus. So the focus is 0, 4. Good. I'm going to go right 1, and that's my directrix. So the directrix is going to be x equals 2. Good. Yeah. It's whatever's in front of the parentheses on the one that's not squared. But you can ignore the sign. The sign tells you which direction it goes, but for the value of p, you just need it as distance so you don't... Once you know that it's 1 and you know it points left, you're going to go left 1, that's your focus. You're going to go right 1, that's your directory. All right, so number 4 said, shh, uh, find a set of parametric equations, whatever. This is the one where you're looking for your answers to be x equals and y equals. It said using the parameters of x equals t and t equals 2 minus x. I said the wording on this was weird and I meant it because it is, right? This is for A. So for A, they want you to use these two. They want you to use Y equals 7 minus 8X and T equals X. So X equals T is the first one, and you're done with that. Then I have to take that T and plug it in place of the X. So for the Y, it should have been 7 minus 8T. That was A. Then B, you needed to use the same Y... So y equals 7 minus 8x, but you're using it with t equals 2 minus x. So I get my, this time I would solve for x from the bottom. I would get negative x equals t minus 2 and x equals 2 minus t. That's the first one. And then I take what x equals and I plug it into this 7 minus 8x equation. So y equals 7 minus 8 times 2 minus t. And I get y equals 7 minus 16 plus 8t. And y equals negative 9 plus 8t. I mean 8, that's a t. t. I think the wording is confusing. Yeah. yeah. So for A, on the next one, you're using these two. And for B, you're using the one that they gave you, x to the third plus 7x. And t equals 2 minus x, those two. You're welcome.